Hello card fighters, Chris here, and today we're gonna talk about GB8s. They've been kinda newly released, um, depending on when this video comes out, but they're kinda new and they've changed the game a lot in my opinion. Um, they, most of them, um, not all of them, some people got pretty not great effects, but most of them have some really powerful effects that are game warping and you have to really think about um, when taking into account the matchup and how the game is going to progress, especially with the G flipping G Guardians. Um, they can take you um, f right up to GB8 really quickly, especially in decks that have such dominating GB8s. Um, that can be very scary if you're not like kind of taking that into account and you know, but like I've said, some of them are absolutely game warping, and uh, obviously the control type clans benefit a lot more, I think, from this because they're already slowing down the game, um, so that you're gonna get to that GB8 level. And so those are clans like Narukami, Kagero, and Link Joker, which all have um, pretty good GB8s. With I would say Narukami having one of the most insane GB8s, um, which is binding your opponent's whole drop zone, the whole drop zone, and then giving your all your units plus two for every card in the bind zone until end of turn, like. And it's a continuous, so like it's just lasting there, and all your units are getting like what if if they uh, like had 30 cards in their drop zone, then all your units get plus 60. That's crazy. Um, Kagero's not quite as great because it only gives plus tens, but hey, like they're probably going to be using it like twice. Um, and then decks like Link Joker, which they're slowing it down, and that new card it can either set up um, the lockdown against decks that like Shadow Paladin or Grand Blue which have kind of been avoiding their lockdown or kind of rips cards out of their hand if you're playing the Chaos variant. So GV8s are definitely like um, warping the game in my opinion like once the game hits that you have to be like very very um, cognizant of what GB8 they have access to and and if that's just gonna totally destroy you and and if you know that once they pull your opponent hits GB8 you just like can't do anything then you have to play a very aggressive strategy to try to be faster than GB8 which can be hard if your opponent just happens to draw into all their heal triggers um, and then they can double G guard with G flips and then do it on their first stride or you know potentially first stride um, second stride is possible third stride is usually possible um, as well and it's pretty it's like not that hard to get to so it, drawing heal triggers is like not actually that bad of a thing and sometimes you might even want to keep them and so I think a lot of decks have benefited um, some especially that have powerful G flip G guardians to go with accelerating their GB eight to kind of pop them out of nowhere um, um, again, those clans like Narukami has a very, very powerful GB8, but also has a very good G Flip G Guard to go along with it. Um, and I think that's one of the best like examples of it, um, because because not only is the GB8 totally swinging the game, but they also have the support to go along with the G Guard that kind of makes it easy to extend the game and just very powerful overall. Um, but you know, t talking about getting a lot of heal triggers into your hand, um, GB8s also open up this new opportunity for GB8 turbo decks to exist, um, where some GB8s are just so powerful that it's worth making a deck solely to get your heal triggers into hand, G guard really quickly, and then bust out GB8 on first or second stride consistently, and just mow down your opponent with the fact they can't deal with that early. And the best example of this is Spike Brothers. There's a very, very powerful deck that uses the GB8, uses four mecha trainers in deck to just mop on people. <laughs> um, they, they accelerate the GB8 extremely quickly. 
Um, I've heard, you know, if you draw all four heals, which is not terribly hard, um, because your starter is going to get you one, you have three mecha trainers in deck, and, it, you know, it's not that hard, um, especially with their superior calling abilities, um, to get all those heals. So you could potentially G guard once and then triple G guard flippers to get <laughs> GB8 on the first try. That's insane, by the way. It's insane. Like, how is your opponent supposed to deal with the Spike Bros GB8, which gives like a billion attacks all at 36k plus? on the first stride so but you know it's not always gonna be on the first stride it's probably more consistent around second stride but even then like a second stride where they're doing that much to you like you have to be a, especially against clans that can't interact with the opponent's field especially on your opponent's turn how are they supposed to deal with that they probably don't they probably just lose um, so it's a very very powerful strategy to to go into a GB8 turbo type, type deck but, uh, I mean, of course, Spike Bros being the best example, but I do think that there's room for other decks to experiment with this kind of GB8 turbo strategy. Of course, you know, not every deck can do that. The decks that have to rely on drawing their heal triggers are never going to be able to like accomplish that. So, while Nairukami has an amazing GB8, and sorry I'm focusing on like Nairukami and Nairukami a lot is because I've recently built the deck and so I have more experience with it, but they don't have a way to search out the heal triggers like Mecha Trainer. So, you're better off playing a long game because because you know that your GB8 is so good that it's probably just going to win you the game on the spot. Um, that's how good the GB8 is. It nullifies a lot of the late game decks which rely on their drop zone to do things. Um, it just binds the whole drop zone so they're not going to be able to play as effectively in the late game. Example being Lured. Um, you bind their whole drop zone, and unless they like drop three grade ones during their guarding phase, um, they're not going to be able to stride with Lua's Ritual skill on the next turn. Or something like Grand Blue, which toolboxes all their cards from the drop zone, they're just that's just going to be gone for them. Um, so there's a you know not to mention that it field wipes and gives all your units plus 60 or so. So so there's a lot of uh, game ending potential there but they don't have a way to turbo into it but because they have a lot of other control tools and the new G Guardian allows them to control on your opponent's turn they can kind of slow down the game and play a more control style till they get to their inevitability so I think it's really interesting that that they're, there's kind of two ways to do it. There's kind of like play slowly and you'll get to GB8 eventually. And then there's also the turbo decks. But either way, they're having a huge impact on the game. I, even um, Beyond Order Dragon, I played against a Chrono Fang deck that used Beyond Order. Because there's a lot more bind effects in Chrono, the Chrono Fang build. That makes it way better for um, using like they have attackers that get called out from the bind zone they have a lot of cards that can be called from the bind zone cards to get power for the number of cards in bind zone so beyond order just accelerates all that and so you can play a very like powerful combo game using beyond order dragon which i thought was really cool um really cool so the gbas are definitely like i don't think that if that they're game warping in the sense that you have to be focusing your deck all around GB8 or else you're not going to be relevant. I think they're game warping in the fact that you have you have to be very um, considerate of them. You have to acknowledge the fact that the GB8 exists and that if your opponent is at G break 5 and you're attacking them, they could simply G guard and then hit you with the GB8 the next turn. Like you can't can't just ignore the fact you can't ignore that fact or if they're at three you you have to be aware like sometimes they're gonna double g guard g flippers and then hit you with the gb8 and that's really scary in decks that have good gb8s um as far as like other decks who don't have great gb8s i don't really know like how how they should be playing this game um obviously against the turbo type decks it's probably not as effective but there may be their cards that come in if the game slows down where controller controlling decks like Narukami and Link Joker that kind of want to stall for their own GB8s are becoming like more of a part of the meta then you probably want to sneak in your own GB8 
just to be like, okay, well, you're gonna slow it down for me. Um, but you have to remember that I have this option available too, and you have to respect it. So it, it's very interesting um, how how you have to like how it warps the game when you hit that point. But I don't think if you're not playing them, it's gonna be like the death of you. I think you just have to be aware of them and how your deck fits strategically into these little like sockets like are you a deck that's trying to power out gb8 as fast as possible are you a deck that's just trying to beat people before um before their gb8s go online or are you trying to slow down the game um to get to your own gb8 which you know is just gonna like wipe out your opponent and that makes it sound like gb 8s the only thing going on, but it's not really. It just happens to be an easy way to think about how... I mean, I'm obviously talking about gb 8 so it's just an easy way to kind of explain how to think about the game in terms of gb 8 Because there's a lot of decks that can play that middle ground where they're not actually trying to use their own gb 8 but they're being faster. There's a lot of ways to play in that little... Um, category which have nothing to do with GB8 and the, actually those are most of the decks that are sitting there um, not really tr focusing on getting to their own GB8 but just kind of playing a really solid game and if they get to GB8 they get to GB8 whatever anyway this is my little talk rant about um, GB8s how what I think they do to the game if they're like meta warping or anything which you know I don't really think they're meta warping but I think you have to be considerate of them um, they well okay maybe they are a little meta warping because that spike rose deck would have never existed if it weren't for the GB8 um, and it will definitely change the meta but you know all cards all new sets change the meta a little bit if it power creep getting new cards that make other decks better is nothing new it's not like it's changing out of the ordinary it's just changing like it normally would um but it doesn't like ruin the game or anything it's not not anything like that there's still all your normal decks which are doing normal things and then it just adds this little extra of turbos and gb8s uh, let me know what you guys think of GBAs. Do you guys like them? Do you think they're they suck? GBAs should have never been made. Um, G flipping G guys never should have been made. Um, that kind of thing. Uh, or if you love them, if you love personally, I love this dynamic of decks that can try to turbo it out. Um, decks that are just all the normal decks, like which are just doing their thing and not really caring about it. And if they get to it, oh well, then they get to it. And then decks that are specifically trying to slow down the game till they get to GB8. So I'm very interested um, what people think of that. Um, I'm a personally a fan of it. Let me know if you're a fan of it or if you hate it. Um, make sure to hit the thumbs up if you liked the video, if you liked me ranting about GB8, that kind of thing. Make sure to subscribe for more videos like this, uh, product reviews, trial deck evolutions, judge bows. I know there hasn't been a lot lately, but they are there, they're there, they're coming. I'm just running out of content, sorry. <laughs> or not content, I'm running out of judge bows to do specifically. Anyway, thanks for watching. Shout out to the Patreon on Patreon for supporting this content. If you want to be like them, wait for the end slate to pop up and hit that orange P. It'll take you right over there where you can read up all, all the benefits and stuff like that. Appreciate you checking that out. Keep on learning. Keep on having fun. And I'll see you in another video.